long after the outbreak, outbreak, I came back. It seemed like a good place to hide. What Troy does is work because the, mu the musicality of this Australian speech is very different to the musicality of the American speech. So we're just working out which words an American would stress, which are usually, usually the opposite to the ones Australians would stress. After? Outbreak. Outbreak. Came back. Good place hide. We're talking about American accent, and the American accent really isn't any American accent that really exists. It's a neutralized sound. I really love all of their work, Willem and, and Ethan and Sam and Claudia. You know, she's one of my favorite actresses. Claudia plays this character, Audrey. Audrey's a, a human being who's managed to survive in a, in a vampire world for 10 years. She's like a fugitive refugee, one of the last remaining 5% well, of the human population since they've all been bled to death. Did you come to finish me off? We need your help. We've been searching for vampires we can trust. Trust? Inevitably, everyone is going to uh, either turn into a vampire or be used as food for a vampire. So they're looking for a, a way to make a substantial difference. She seeks me out as a possible ally, and they're in desperate need of allies. The world can be divided up into people who love immortality and love being a vampire and are in denial about the future of the world, and then other vampires who have a conscience and they never wanted to become vampires and he falls into that camp. This is the ring we just used to get a close-up of the lettering, which is an important part of the script, which they couldn't achieve on a regular size ring, so he made the sonnet. Ten hour days, ah, more like 14. They're pretty big, it's too much to do. There is a mattress over there for when anybody actually <laughs> drops. It's Go like over and have a look at that corner, there's a mattress with a piece of foam as a pillow. I get suckered in every time. And every time it's like, oh, but this, Steve, this time will be different. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it never is. No, well, it, it isn't, it isn't. Well, it, it, it's one of those things, the budget gets better every time, but they also get more ambitious. So you feel just as much pain, Ellie. It's not just pain on a little scale now, now it's pain on a broad scale. But it's good. It's the best way to work. It's just one of those things you don't know how you're going to do it, but somehow you do every time. It, it has to be good, because if I say what I'm really feeling... <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently we are in the car and we're running away from the vampires and uh, we have a slight accident where we nearly run into Ethan Hawke's car. What are you doing? Oh shit, you're human! His car is relatively undamaged. In fact, I don't think it's damaged at all. But ours is a, um, well, a write-off. You can't see because the damage I'm on the driving. other side. Yeah, that's right. I can right. kill vampires, but I can't drive for shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Here, this is when you shoot him. Right, or like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you alright? Get back! Oh, hey, no, Don't what you... come any closer! Shoot him again! Don't! You're, you're human. Ethan Hawke's character suggests that we jump into his car, which has been fumigated by customs. It smells like Roundup. Get in my car! I'll help! Come on! The best of the horror genre is always doing two things at once. You know? A lot of the great horror films, or science fiction films, which were made during the 1950s, had a kind of uh, parallel to you know, what was happening in terms, politically, in terms of communism, in terms of uh, the bomb. I think that the issues in the story have some very interesting parallels, again, to today's society. The vampires running out of their blood resource. It's quite sort of eerily similar to today. Just put some more fucking blood in my coffee. I can't. The same way the vampires are running out of humans. They're eating their own resources. They're destroying their world. That metaphor is so powerful. simple and 
and straightforward my role. And of course the challenge there is to the not to make it hard, which is what we always do and we have something that's easy as we somehow trip it up. We're doing uh, the opening of the movie. This is probably not the most busy part of the centre of Brisbane. And this scene is where uh, Ed arrives at work at the Vampire Corporation, which is the Bromley Marx Corporation, which is this vast building here, which was uh, one of the first locations that Peter and Michael told me that they wanted to use in the movie. And I was convinced I could talk them out of it, actually because this is the worst location you could possibly shoot. And I hate this building, and it's cost us a fortune, and I really hope it comes out well. It's been an absolute cool place. Mate, it's uh, been pretty hectic, man. We're getting the girls coming here, trying to see, sit in Ethan's chair, and you know, all that sort of stuff. It's um, quite entertaining, <laughs> quite entertaining. Get a bigger lift, okay?